Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Now this is not something that we would typically cover on the channel, but it was interesting enough for me to ask Intel to get our hands on one. This is the brand new Intel NUC 9 Extreme, the Ghost Canyon NUC, and it's kind of like this weird convergent hybrid form factor. It's not a desktop, it's not a laptop. What exactly is it? Let's find out. Now it's just a bit of a caveat with this video, we've already pulled this apart, but we're gonna show you again, just for the sake of science, really. It's um, it's super easy to pull apart, literally, it's just like two screws on the back. We're gonna take a look inside, and we have benchmarked it, so make sure you stick around to see how this system performed, because it's quite interesting. There is a lot of uh, contributing factors as to why something like this actually exists. So, it's got these uh, cooling fans that sit on the top. I actually thought, um, this was a mistake, just because of the way that half of it was actually meshed up, but yeah, it's okay. It actually helps with the airflow and all that jazz. But well, let's uh, get these panels off. All right, here we go. So our version, this isn't uh, the uh, retail version, if you will. This is a, like they call this a reviewer's kit. And basically what this is, is this is a spec'd out version because these typically ship in a bare bone factor and you need to configure them yourself on the Intel website. So ours actually comes with the ASUS 2070 Mini, which is actually quite cool. Otherwise we wouldn't have the GPU to fit in here to test. So Intel is kind enough to provide us a version of this with that GPU you can upgrade these quite easily. And I think this is kind of the point of this. It's kind of like this laptop type of build for a desktop, but it is upgradable unlike most laptops on the market, although there are always exceptions to those kind of things. So now we should just be able to slide this little 2070 out. Out you come, radio. Okay, so this is a, a regular 2070. Well, actually it's a, like a mini ITX version of it. I think they made this specifically for this, but uh, word on the street is there are other vendors who are making cards for these type of chassis. Now, so this platform itself isn't just about, you know, being made by Intel. There's actually a bunch of other companies like CyberPower who are using these new devices. Now, this looks like a regular PCIe card, but don't let the looks fool you at all because it is not a PCIe card. They call this a compute element and basically what it is, it's a device that's the size of a PCIe card, but it's got the CPU on it. It's got all the PCIe controllers. It's got everything you need to have a fully functioning PC. So you can't actually just pull this card out and plug it into your computer and hope that you double the performance of your computer magically. That's just not how it works. It is literally a, it's like a compute card. I, I like the, the word compute element sounds cool, but it's more of a compute card. And basically what it's got is it's got a bit of a, um, a baseboard or, or, or kind of like a backplane really. And the GPU can plug into it as well as the card. And what makes this interesting is this chassis alone can be upgraded. So if Intel comes out and says, hey, look, we've got like a new 10th gen CPU or whatever on one of these compute elements, it'll, it'll be just as easy as undoing two screws, sliding it out, plugging it in and you're upgraded, which is actually quite cool for a small form factor PC because this isn't really ITX, this is um, it's, its own thing. Obviously you can build ITX systems with close to the capacity of this, which is, if you're interested, it's about five liters in total, which is pretty small, but yeah, if, you, if you're looking at building a decent ITX system with specs like this, you're probably looking somewhere between seven to 13 liters. So it is actually quite impressive what is shoved into this little chassis. The problem is the price. Now, <laughs> in this configuration that Intel sent through, uh, they're going for around 2,700 US dollars. And if we did some type of on-screen calculation now, and just from the top of my head, that's well over 4,000 Australian dollars for a eight core 16 thread system <laughs> with uh, not a lot of storage. I think this one's got two drives in total. It's got one Optane drive for booting and another SSD for storage. It's got about a terabyte RAM wise. It's got 16 gigs of RAM. And yeah, like there's a few things that make this 
Not as appealing to enthusiasts, however, for people who don't know a lot about computers and needs a solution, it's interesting, but probably not worth the price premium. But you do get a couple really nice things with this. So you do get dual ethernet, which is nice. It's only one gig ethernet. Dual Thunderbolt 3, which is actually pretty interesting too, because if you wanted to expand the system out, it wouldn't like be too hard. Like say, for instance, you're using this as a workstation, you've only got dual one gig ethernet, you can just plug in a, a 10 gig <laughs> Thunderbolt ethernet adapter if you wanted to anyway. So you're, you're not really limited that much, but it does come at a premium because of the small form factor. All these small form factor PCs just cost lots and lots of money. So let's get this compute element out so we can take a little bit of a closer look. We'll see if we can uh, completely tear it down. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. This is the whole computer right here on this card, on the compute element. I like to call it a compute card. On this card, there's actually an Intel i9-9980, which is a mobile CPU. And the reason for it is uh, <laughs> it doesn't require a whole lot of cooling for it to actually keep itself under temps. And we have actually benchmarked this. We will go through all of that a little bit later in the video. And as I mentioned, it's got expansion for two M.2 slots. So there's a one terabyte Kingston drive in here, which is a configurable option out of the factory. You can add another drive on here quite easily. And if we go back to the actual chassis itself on the, let's call it the back plane, there's also an Optane boot drive, which is quite nice with a chunky, chunky old heat sink on it. But that's basically how it works. And there's also options for you to maybe in future someday, put a much more powerful GPU in because it does actually come with extra PCIe power, which is quite interesting. I'd love to see uh, some GPUs in the future that would be this size, more powerful than this 2070 to chunk it up a bit and see how we go. But yeah, let's, um, let's take a look at some benchmarks because you guys will want to know how it performed. So let's do that. Let's see how it did in our regular suite of benchmarks. As you can see, the performance is actually pretty impressive, but is it worth the money? Uh, personally, if I was to be spending 2,700 US dollars on a PC for gaming, being an enthusiast like I am, probably not. But there is a market for it. But what is that market? And I'm gonna say that it's a very tiny segment of the market. And I spoke to someone about this the other day of where people like having a really portable computer, but
but they don't want it to be a laptop. Now, there is a market for that, and uh, personally, for me, I'm kind of in that market because if I was traveling and I was on the road and I was in a hotel and I was wanting to edit, I would much prefer to have a desktop machine than a laptop for a few reasons. First of all, this thing doesn't get very loud, which is actually quite impressive. We didn't like measure the acoustics, but audibly, it's not too loud. It ramps up and down every now and again, but it's not annoyingly loud, which is the problem that I have with most laptops because they sound like aircraft carriers and, and F1 fighter jets taking off all the time. So that's actually quite a nice thing to have. It's, it's quiet. The other thing is it's expandable too. So not like a laptop where you're just locked in, you spent thousands of dollars on this hardware and that's it. You can update the M.2 or the RAM or whatever because I can then upgrade the GPU at a later date. Now, the problem with all of this, and this is the major, major problem. Sure, the compute element is upgradable. Yeah, that's a really excellent idea. The problem is how much are these gonna cost when new versions come out? That's always the big question. Sure, the, you might be paying $2,700 now, but these new elements could cost a further $2,000 down the line. Now, in three years time, when you are planning on building a new PC or buying a new PC, sure, it might be affordable then, but yeah, I'm, I, I don't think I'm personally sold on the NUC 9 Extreme platform. It's very cool. Uh, I like that these convergent technologies are becoming a thing. It's practice for Intel really, because they're making their new GPUs. So they're like, hey, how can we make these cool convergent technologies to um, flex our muscles a bit and you know get our, our, our running start on building GPUs. But other than that, it's a very niche product for a very small part of the market. I can't personally recommend these to people, but they are very, very cool and that's all i got to say about it hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys uh found what you were looking for and there's plenty of other reviews on this as well which is why i didn't want to dive in too deep because a lot of the questions about these have been answered and yeah this is more of an opinion piece about convergent technologies i do think this is very cool but it just costs too much money right now what do you reckon claire cool. I like the size. The size is pretty excellent. Mm. I like it. Now the problem is I got to put all this back together. <laughs> Sounds like a problem for you. Sounds like a neck problem. Anyways guys if you like the music that you heard on this video and all of our other videos I make the music it's available over on our Patreon and if you want to support the channel consider hitting that join button or getting early access to videos just like this one over on Floatplane. Anyways I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and I'm gonna put all this back together, but not before filming bulk B-roll. So let's do that and hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys found out something about this that you didn't quite know. I know that I didn't go super in depth with it. That was kind of the, that was by design really, because there's been lots of people covering these already and there's lots of benchmarks and stuff out there already. I just wanted to let you guys know how I feel. Simple as that. Thanks for watching.